The fact that you guys tagged me so much in this video saying I'm pretty sure I heard the Bentis Puh in the background. Was that him that threw up? <laughs> It got me a little bit. I can say I'm probably the only person in the world that makes that noise. In fact, I could pretty much trademark it at this point. And somehow, somebody randomly throwing up on a dude's bus makes the same noise. I don't know if I'm happy about this or not. But to answer all your questions, no, that was not me. I did not throw up all over those people on that bus. But it is nice to know that other people can make that sound, even if it is only when they're violently ill. Three days before surgery, holy moly. Oh my gosh, that is an insane class three surgery. You see her lower jaw stuck way out further there. And that's actually for her because her upper jaw did not grow fast enough. Her lower jaw grew normal, upper jaw didn't. So we're now post-op. A lot of the swelling stuff comes from those first couple days, but you can already see how much she had a double jaw surgery. So they broke her lower jaw to bring it back and her upper jaw to bring it forward, which is kind of crazy because when you do these things, you can literally like float their jaw in their mouth before you set it. Um, a lot of swelling, they're probably going to go ahead and wire it shut so it can fix. But after a week or two, you can kind of normally get back to at least feeding normal. I mean, she probably ate through a tube in the sides. It's a rough recovery for sure, but it is something that I think is definitely needed in her case. And look how much it changed her face. Absolutely insane. And the crazy part is, even though it stinks for the couple months that she had this, her life will be changed forever from this surgery. Looks amazing, and good luck on your recovery. If two gyms weren't crazy enough, we had to go ahead and just paint the whole tube. And I wanna just make sure that you guys all know this because this is the internet. This is not nail polish, okay? Don't, don't use nail polish on your teeth. It's toxic, guys, don't do that. This is actually called tooth polish. It's actually physically meant to be on your teeth. It's actually perfectly safe. You paint it on just like you would nail polish, just on your tooth. And then over time, that will harden into a layer that will actually last pretty good. Now, when you don't want it anymore, all you do is take like a toothpick or something like she did, and then you just go ahead and just chip it off and go back to your normal tooth. And yes, for those asking it does come in white and no it doesn't look good it looks fake and bad but if you want to look like you got pink sparkly junk on your teeth then just go ahead you know this generation you, you guys just really worried <laughs> oh my gosh that literally scared the crap out of me when I saw this the first time. And these comments are something else. The barber when you take a little off the side. I'm going to the dentist tomorrow, but after seeing this, I'm not going anywhere. Bro didn't pay his bill, so he had to take him away. Well, Frodo Bentis, what is going on here? And why is this man getting his teeth shattered out of his face? These are either old crowns or veneers that need to be redone, and so he's taking them off, or they're temporary. You see, when we first do your crowns or veneers or whatever it is, we prep it, but we have to get something there before the lab can make your final crown. So we put these temporary veneers ears or crowns on there and when we're done well we gotta get them off somehow so what we do is we make that little line right down the middle to kind of make it easier and then we pop them right off by twisting motion it just shatters them into pieces and for those asking what this metal thing is down below sometimes we have porcelain fused to metal crowns and so that's the metal housing on the bottom and the porcelain goes on top over that that being said it doesn't make it look any less painful in fact it looks really exciting <laughs> That's nasty. But for real though, Bentis, can this happen and is this real? Actually, it's surprising to me that people think that this is actually real. The people in the comments are saying, am I losing it or is this CGI? And someone else said, please say psych right now. Well, it's pretty obvious that it's fake. These are like Play-Doh molded teeth inside of a pair. But the crazy part is this actually can happen. And you'd be surprised when getting veneers or anterior crowns. This is one of the main things we tell people is now that you've got these, you will never be able to bite into an apple again for this exact reason. Another crazy thing, this is actually one of the number one ways people lose baby teeth too is they'll bite into an apple or something and pull it away and what do you know that tooth's gone forever another crazy thing is the guy said this is 10 grand worth of veneers and those are actually clearly not veneers because they fully circle around in a circle so uh, it's crazy to me that people still don't know the difference between crowns and veneers remember veneers are just a very light shaving off the top and it's almost like an outer shell that comes and sticks on top of the tooth where a crown is something that goes all the way around exactly like what was in his pair those look more like crowns to me and do you know how much that would cost to get all those those crowns out in one go like that. I mean, that's like, it's crazy. You can get up to like $50,000 or something like that many crowns going on. I mean, that's a lot of work. Luckily for him, it's not real. That being said, his CGI capabilities are pretty good. Pow!
What was that? <laughs> my man just hawked up the biggest tonsil stone I've ever seen in my life. And if you guys don't know, a tonsil stone is basically where you have these little crypts in your tonsil. And food and mush will get into those little holes in your tonsil. And then every time you swallow, it will compact it down until it turns into this giant rotting food rock. And it's also one of the number one causes for bad breath. So if you ever brush your teeth and someone's like, hey, your breath smells nasty. You'd be like, bro, I just brushed my teeth. How does it smell nasty? That's probably why. Another thing that you'll feel is a scratchy thing in the back of your throat. That could also be a sign of a tonsil stone. But Ventus, what do I do about my tonsil stone? Well, you used to not be able to do anything. You would get your tonsils removed, or some people would try everything from pushing on them with their fingers to Q-tips to scraping them out with a plastic thing. That was until we came up with the Something Nice Water Floss. Now, the cool part is this is not just a water flosser that only cleans your teeth. It actually has a separate motor mode, and if you double tap, it'll take it into what we call a safe mode or a safe motor mode. And we also made a patented tonsil stone tip here that's longer to reach back there with a larger opening to make that flow a little safer for you. So once you put our safe motor with the tonsil stone tip, you can have a nice, clean, hygienic way to blast out those tonsil stones out of your tonsillar crit. In fact, I invented this because I get tonsil stones all the time. They cause me bad breath and I had no way of getting them out. And I tried all the water flossers and they were just way too high powered to get them out without hurting my tonsils. So we went ahead and invented the best water flosser on the market. And not only does it have the high powered mode for flossing and the soft powered mode for flushing out your braces or tonsil stones. I mean, it's got a great easy cup system here. It's got capacitive touch sensors up and down. It's even got a spot for an Apple watch style charger. So if you've got tonsil stones, don't want bad breath, or if you just want an amazing water flosser to floss your teeth with go with something nice i mean I, I should know i engineered it and plus you know it's sold out like five times and then hopefully you won't be hawking your tonsil stones out on all of your friends you're all officially right, braces free wearing Here's a retainer you guys retainer. tagged oh, me in thank this thank you very much time. so you're gonna wear that every night yes you're gonna wear it every night so probably just like once every two months <laughs> Dude, and i'll put it in so and it'll be so bad that i won't be able to sleep that night actually is that maybe would that be good the big thing with retainers is you want a subtle lisp before you go to bed and i think it's probably best if i don't wear it enough to the point where every time i do put it in i'm kind of forcing yeah. my teeth into well, a shape you guys that is this? so unfamiliar that it, it's it feels almost at risk of the teeth falling yeah. out yeah you just spent two full years wearing braces Braces and you've spent thousands of dollars on this. So it's pretty critical that you wear it like every night it if church. possible. <laughs> After you brush your teeth and floss. All right, I'm watching you put it in the garbage. You want to take that out? No, I know we talked about this. I know I'm not going to be wearing it too much, but I would like to wear it just enough to the point where I, it builds up enough blood. Oh, God. And it's, na it's so, so true. You don't wear it and it gets night. nasty. Oh, shoot. I'm actually just gonna not. I'm gonna forget that I actually have a retainer. Are you gonna floss? I also floss every night, which is why when you flossed me and my teeth were bleeding profusely, I was going, hey, what's going on here? It's true. I don't even know why I bother at this point. You guys don't care. You guys don't care. You know what? I'm done. I'm done with you guys. I'm done with you guys. It's over. It's over. <laughs> You're autistic. You're autistic. How you brush your teeth can tell you if you're autistic or not? Is that true? Well, actually, this is one of the main tests in your autism assessment by your psychiatrist. So the way that the test starts out is they say, show me how you brush your teeth or walk me through how you brush your teeth. And a lot of people in the comments were kind of like, well, maybe it's how I told them the story and maybe autistic people are less descriptive or detailed. And that's actually a little bit of it, but not really what they're looking for. Because what they're actually looking for is if you have a thing called ideomotor apraxia, which means the way that you kind of, your brain connects to the muscles is not quite right. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the right way how to do this and the wrong way. Obviously, don't go using this to cheat your autism test or whatever, but this is just what you're supposed to do. So the correct way, obviously, that when we grab and brush our teeth is we hold it and then we turn it and then we would brush our teeth, right? And so if you do not have this toothbrush there, then you would have a correct option would be to grab it and to show that you know how to brush your teeth. So someone with apraxia who can't quite figure that out doesn't give the real world example, they give a different example. So if you ask them how to brush their teeth, they may go like this with a finger, or they may even go like this to brush their teeth with a finger. Now, obviously, that's not how you brush your teeth. Last time I checked, you do not brush your teeth like this, and it's because your brain is wiring just a little bit different. And so that's why this is a pretty standard test among all psychiatrists to see if you have autism or not. Now, obviously, there's a lot more different parts of the test. I know a lot of people were saying they had the flying frog book and a lot of other different tests in between because there's a lot, and it's a different spectrum of a lot of different things in there. This is just one. So the toothbrush test is to find apraxia, not if you're telling stories or whatever else in between. And well, I guess now. Now you know how to cheat that test so uh yeah all right you guys tagged yeah. me yeah. in Incredible this indeed. okay you can change your confidence so apparently this guy's wow. getting uh yeah. veneers i want to say i mean his teeth look really good i mean he's literally just like a quick whitening 
away maybe a tiny Invisalign? It looks really good, so I don't know what's going on here, but... Looks like they're getting them ready for bonding. Um, you can see that Teflon. Okay, it looks like we're doing composite bonding. So this is a different type. I actually, I don't mind this. You can see how he's adding that composite glue there. And so this doesn't take away any tooth structure on the teeth, which is really important for me, I think. Um, it's a good way to even test if you like veneers before you actually permanently get them, because this can be reversed. So it looks like they're polishing it up. And you do each tooth individually. You hear, see how the next teeth are Teflon taped away so they don't get anything on them and then he's artistically kind of doing each tooth together. Now the problem that I have with these is that they can get a lot thicker, right? Um, and, and they get too thick because you're not taking away the tooth like you do in normal veneers, you have to add on top. You can get kind of what this we call the horse teeth look. And so it looks like they're really, they just brought his laterals down a little bit. Oh my gosh, yeah, okay. I'm not trying to be mean, those look really blocky. They look super blocky, they look super fake, they look kind of more like horse teeth than anything. Luckily for him, this is super important, is he did not ruin his teeth. He can just go get that shaved off and be perfectly fine. Anyways, let me know down below what you guys think either way. I love you guys, bye. Someone just wants to watch the world burn, doesn't she? But for real though, Bentis, what's the deal with eating and braces? Can I eat whatever I want or do I have to stay strict to the rule? Well, I'm not gonna lie to you, there's some people that can literally eat anything with braces and never break a bracket. In fact, let's check out the comments here. Someone said, I eat anything, I do not care. I gets down, I don't play. And someone else said, I still eat everything and my bracket never broke. But how can they be eating everything and not breaking brackets when I'm eating crunchy stuff and I'm breaking brackets? Well. The word here is intent. You see, from what I've seen over the years, if, if you're careless, if you have something crunchy, sticky, chewy, whatever, and you just go in, <laughs> you just don't care at all, you turn off your pressure receptors, you forget that you got braces on, you will break a bracket. 100% it will happen. But there are people that can kind of just, I don't know, figure out how to chew with braces. I would say that it's almost like chewing like a cow, where you gotta kind of grind side to side. When you go kind of more side to side to chew, you learn versus an up and down chewing, you won't torque that bracket and pop it off. Now, another thing that could be completely different is maybe her brackets are up out of the way or she's not biting in areas. I mean, if her brackets are low enough out of the way when she bites down, her teeth don't really go near them and so that food and everything in between can't break the brackets off. Now, am I recommending you to go out and eat whatever you want? No, obviously not because the majority of you are gonna break things on chewy, sticky, crunchy, items okay don't do it but for those of you that aren't gonna listen to me at least chew more grinding side to side versus up and down and if you're just a magician with the brackets and you never break anything don't tell me that you're eating everything bad just let's let it be okay maybe let me sleep better at night like when you take off your braces and put on Invisalign that's forever that's a scam <laughs> A scam! Well, I'm not gonna lie, it is probably one of the most unfortunate things about the way that your teeth and mouth work. Because he's right, once you get done with braces, you have to go into what we call retention or retainer. And this does, for most people, last for the rest of their life within reason a little bit. Let's talk about it. So as you guys probably know, if you watch some of my videos, the teeth sit down inside your bone and they're actually connected between the root and the bone by these little bungee cord fibers called PDL fibers. And your teeth kind of bounce on these fibers and that's how you feel what we call proprioception, which is you can feel pressure and pain. So that's the stuff that if you bite down too hard, your body goes, whoa, and then it makes you open your mouth really big so you don't injure yourself. So these fibers are definitely needed. But let's just say that if your tooth was crooked and we decided to turn that tooth straight inside the bone. Well, what's gonna happen is those fibers will stretch along with it. And then when you're out of braces, they want to shoot itself back to where those cords were originally straight. Now, this is why we put you in retainers after braces is to hold that area so the bungee cords can't win the battle and turn the teeth back, causing your teeth to shift. Now, a couple of notes, this isn't something that lasts forever. Just like bungee cords can lose their stretchability over years and years of, of being pulled, well, those fibers have the same kind of thing that can happen. If you wear it five years, 10 years, you know, out there like that, you may only have to wear your retainers once a month to keep everything straight. Another thing is it depends on the person for sure. If you have very mild crowding, your teeth didn't turn that much, and so those bungee cords aren't really stretched that much. But if you have really crazy, weird teeth, then it stretches a ton. Those are very hyper stretched and can move a lot quicker. But hey, I look at it like this. I wear mine every night to protect my teeth anyways from grinding, clenching, all that type of stuff. So it's like a two in one, protects my teeth and keeps them straight.